In this video, we will show you how to create and edit guidelines. The guidelines are virtual, user-added lines that are used while creating or editing a design in order to help the user align and properly position the design parts. So, when you move a design, the edges snap on the guidelines. Or while you digitize, the cursor snaps on the guidelines. Of course, you can easily hide the guidelines or disable the snapping on the guidelines. In order to add or edit the guidelines, you need to start the Guidelines tool. When this tool is turned on, the software practically starts a specific mode where the only thing you can do is draw or edit guidelines. To create one, click on a point and then drag to create the line that you want. If you drag horizontally close to zero degrees, the software snaps to zero to help you create a truly horizontal guideline. Likewise, you can create vertical guidelines and if you drag diagonally, you can create diagonal guidelines. You can create as many guidelines as you like. If you place the mouse cursor on top of any guideline and click, the guideline gets selected and gets a dark shadow. Additionally, a selected guideline has a green point which is the guidelines rotation center. Put the mouse cursor on top of the green point and click and drag to move the guideline. If you are on top of the guideline but not on top of the green point, a rotation icon appears, so if you click and drag, the guideline is rotated. You may also hold the control key down and drag to move the guideline irrespective of the point on which you grabbed the guideline. If you hold the shift key down, the rotation will snap on every 15 degrees. You can also define the position and rotation of the guideline using specific numeric values. So, if you set rotation to 0, you get a horizontal line. If you set to 90, you get a vertical guideline. The X and Y values define the position of the green point. You can delete the selected guideline if you just press the delete key. Using the Work Area option, you can insert the shape, which may then be used as a guide. From the appearing dialog, you may define the center of the inserted work area shape and select any of the available work area shapes. For rectangular shapes, you need to define width and height for the area. Once you press OK, this pink shape appears on the design area. The shape appears with this blue outline which means that it is being selected. If you click and drag, you can move the shape or delete the work area using the delete key. One thing you should have in mind is that you have only one work area shape at any given moment. So if you start work area again and select another shape or size, you will see that the previous one is replaced. For polygonal work areas, you need to additionally select number of sides and the start angle. Last but not least, bear in mind that any shape of your design can be used as work area.